This is Evan Van Blargen. If you have not seen the shaping of this board, click here. Or and maybe it's over here. I'm not sure. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we literally shaped this board like six months ago. <laughs> <laughs> and Evan's studying for dental boards, so he's really busy. I finally took mine, so I'm free. And, uh... Oh, <laughs> lucky man. <laughs> and we're gonna glasses board day. Okay, also, Evan, tell us about the color. <laughs> okay, listen. It was a cool idea. Like, it looks cool. But this took me, like, four hours. <laughs> of just, like, sitting there, like, bent over like this, like, painting it. And there's a lot more board. This is just one side of the board. So... Unfortunately, this is the last you'll see of, of my cow print. So, I think we're just gonna like sand this off and we're gonna do a cool resin swirl or something. Yeah! By the way, what are we doing? What do you wanna do? Okay, so I would like to put glass on top of the board. <laughs> Inconceivable! <laughs> 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 So this video is a little different. I chose to keep it long format to really show all the steps that it takes to glass a surfboard and super importantly, to really show the little tips and tricks. And I just don't feel like there's anywhere else on YouTube that really clearly brings these together. So for everyone out there who wants to get in to glass and surfboards, this will be very informative and it's pretty entertaining along the way. Halfway through the build made one big mistake and almost really messed things up. But in the end, everything turned out super cool. But before the video, Lost Pirate Coffee Company. My buddy started this company. He's an absolute legend. He started medical school when he was only 19 years old. Now he's in neurosurgery, the 60 year resident. And when he's not working like a dog, he's surfing and obsessing over coffee. This coffee's super good. It's roasted the day before it chips. And for every bag you buy, my buddy donates to Team C's. They're a nonprofit that have a bunch of cool projects all over the world. If you're into coffee, here's a 10% coupon. But now, back to the board build. Resin swirl for sure on the bottom. Sick. Okay. We'll choose the colors, that'll be fun. Um, then for the top, maybe just do, I think just do a cut lap. And so just have like a clean cut lap. white, but then like a border, right? Would it be possible to do a diamond that's resin swirled? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we But the, just... the diamond's the only thing that's resin swirled and then everything else is white. Yes, sir. Is this a hammer? Yeah. Yes. Five nine. <gasps> Ooh, okay. Ah! <laughs> okay, trick number one. So this has been in the garage for like six months. And as best, even though we try really hard, there's still a bunch of small little dings. It's been a while since I've been able to come in. We've been busy. The guys showed me a little trick. You get a heat gun and the foam will expand a little bit when you heat it up. So let's see if we can't expand this and then hopefully stand it flush. We don't want to burn it, but see it, it's coming up. Oh my God, what? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's crazy. Right? I think we pretty much got it. Sick. That's so cool. Right? Wow. Here's another little one. Done. And here, really, we should, I should turn on the, uh, the lights so you can tell. Cool little custom tool. Stole one of these Merca Abernets and duct taped it into a gauntlet. So this is really nice for doing rails, especially around the nose. I, I'm just wrapping my fingers around the rail and it finishes so nicely. There goes like three hours of uh, labor. Okay, she's all cleaned up, Evan. Yes, she's perfectly clean. Looks ready. like a brand new blank. Perfectly clean, ready to get dirty. <laughs> Flip it, let's tape it. I'm legitimately trying to be like gentle with it. Oh yeah. I don't want that like explosion thing to happen again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very nervous about that. <laughs> What's this big deal? Down. <laughs> 
Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut that and it's gonna be here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, none of you are gonna joke about it. <laughs> okay, a couple ways you could do this. So, uh, lots of guys freehand it. I freehand it lots of the time. Uh, Evan, if we wanna be a little more precise, we can mark the rail bands with this and then tape off. Or we can freehand. What do you want? I'm down to bougie it out. Let's do it. Okay. So now, this is a pretty cool little tool. It's uh, by Foam Easy. So, put it up against there and the, the, you want to figure out how wide you want your rail band to be. So, check this out. What's tricky is if you rock this, you'll get different distances. So, you want to match the exact distance all the way around. It, it helps to pull towards you. It's hard if you push. Okay. And it, it actually helps to, to tilt it at a slight angle. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, it's a dragging edge. Is that too much? Of, I don't want to make too much of a divot. No, you just want barely anything that we, so we can see it. Perfect, perfect. You can barely see it. it. Looks big in the camera, but it's really small. And what we'll do is Good we'll name. tape just on the inside so that divot gets filled up with the cut lap. So the lines of the cut lap go right through the leash plug. So I'm gonna actually really quickly glue in this leash plug and I'll cover it up and we'll glass right over the top. I love this little trick. Lay down the razor blade and just pull the tape and it cuts it super clean. Ugh. Okay, we're all taped up. She's all taped up. And then we watch out. Freaking excited. Virgin glass table, we just made this. Uh, video linked here or here if you want to see us making this dope glass table. There's three key improvements with this that it's way better than my previous glass table. I was there for this. I remember oh. that. Oh. Oh. Okay, sorry. Too much energy. <laughs> Not enough energy. I'm not Never okay. Okay, Evan, what color do you want? Uh... Evan, what color are you going to choose, sir? Well, I... Yeah, I... Four colors, multiple colors. Color... Color. This one, obviously. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> After all that. Uh, uh, yeah, I think, I think this is the one I want. So you just want one color? Mm. Like solid color? Do you want a swirl? What do you want? Oh no, <laughs> not that again! <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm gonna put that in, that's gonna be so funny. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot, but that's such a, okay. So it's pretty common for resin to drip off your gloves onto your forearms. So if you go to a glass shop, you'll actually see the glassers pretty commonly cutting tube socks and wearing them. It's just an easy way to keep it off your skin. And have you ever pulled cloth? No, I have not actually. Oh shoot. This, big deal. Super okay. fun thing pulling your first cloth. Yo, that, so that's a 125 or 165 meter roll of cloth. It's like, it's like 400 bucks. Really? Yeah, isn't that crazy? Sweet. <laughs> Someone's excited. A little, wow, that thing cuts so well. I was cutting it, bending over. Forget, I've got brand new glass stand. I'm gonna cut it while it's all nice and high and I can easily wrap this onto the rails. Yeah. Dumb. Easy. What I'm doing is I'm checking to make sure I have enough length on these rails to wrap all the way over onto my tape. 
So this is going to be a fancy putt lap. Uh, he's really weird. He likes cats. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's all I remember about the dude. <laughs> I mean, I like cats. Only in like a good stew or something. But oh my goodness, Evan. What? <laughs> Wait, let me clean this up a little bit. It's a little nasty, a little dirty. That was me. Okay, ready? It's out. Wait a second. Yeah, look at that tight look underneath. Tight, 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 tight. Yeah, that's good. That's what we're going for. All right. Woo! Okay, one thing. We spent all this time making this really nice, hard, sharp edge in the tail. And I learned this the hard way. So it's sort of hard. It's really hard to wrap fiberglass cloth around a sharp, hard, 90-degree edge. So it was actually the guys at the local surf factory. They're like, John, stop bringing us boards like this. Do this. And what they did is they literally took their thumbnail and they ran it along the edge and flattened it out. They rounded the corners. And how you re-get that, how you get that edge back is you actually just build in a resin dam and you recreate that uh, when glassing the board and hot coating. So yeah, fun little fact. The more you know. Okay, perfect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix three pots with different colors. Mostly we'll have one base color and then a couple accent colors. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll pour the accents into here, sort of drizzling it around different shapes. And we'll, with one or two swirls, just swirl it, swirl it. And it sort of like stratifies. You know, we're not mixing it, blending it together, but you'll maintain the swirls. And then we'll pour the master bucket onto the board. Also, I'm not sure how much we should use. I, I low-key don't measure anymore. I just feel it. <laughs> so, I go by feeling. I know. Uh, wait, are we still doing the, um, the practice one first, though? Yes. Okay. Just want to make sure. Whatever color touches the glass first is sort of what permeates it, right? Yeah. You know what? I think gold would look cooler. Gold? Yeah, I think, I think the yellow gold, this one right here. Yeah. Okay, test number two. Test number two. I actually really like that sort of like faint, small changes. Yeah. I think that's sick. Brushing around all the sides and the bottom. Evan's wild. He's decided last second, untested, to put a little bit of teal if he can open it up. Maybe this is a sign from God. Are you excited? This is uh, the fun, scary part. I'm so excited, but like, there's no going back. Um, so we've got three buckets. Blue is our base majority. I would say 60% of all our resin is blue. 30% is white, sort of this off-white. And then 10% is that mustard orange. Yeah. So we're just gonna pick it up and drizzle it in all these crazy shapes. again. Man, that looks really cool, Evan. I hope the white isn't, I should have, I should have just waited and done the yellow after because it's like mixing it a little bit. But I'm not sure if we're going to, I don't think you even need to give it a swirl. Yeah. Okay, so slow down. Let's, <laughs> I'm not stressed, Bob, I'm not, not stressed. stressed. Actually, no, we're in no rush. This is UV lamb. We've got plenty of time. Okay. We're not like freaking out here. I love how like before I was just all like happy joking around. Now I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> uh. okay, Evan, I have okay. faith in you. La yeah. Yeah, dude, that is sick. Oh my goodness. This is going to be so freaking cool. Oh, I'm so glad we chose these colors. Oh my goodness, dude, it's turning out so freaking cool. I was so nervous about this. So the more clean you squeegee it, the better it'll look. Okay. So maybe start in here and do one squeegee off right into your bucket. Okay, nice straight and slow. down. Yeah, medium pressure, because you want it to saturate. You don't want to push too hard. Okay. Medium pressure. You know, every time you do it, wipe that onto your thing. 
So yeah, like that. Dude, that's sick. Look at this. Dude, I am so freaking happy with this right now. I wish I had my mask on, but. Put it on, Evan. You can put down your thing for one second and do it. Dude, this is sick. This is Dude, so this cool. This is so cool. This is a beautiful board. You start middle to tail and middle to nose. So see this? This is excess. I'm gonna pull out excess. Medium pressure. And sometimes there will be creases. You just do your best, but. Okay. We'll, if we can't get that crease, we'll grab a razor. And then kind of release it? Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Why is this starting to kick? What? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is it because the, the door's Close open? the door. Hold on, let me, okay. Yeah, just, just, we gotta just do it. Don't touch anything, Don't, uh, let me do it. I'll save us time. Hold on. Okay, that side's fine. Just here is starting to kick on us though. Okay, okay that little bit of UV filtering through. We got yeah. this, give me a razor. No rush, no rush. Where's the razor? There's a razor on, right there? No, sorry. Everything else, the other side felt fine? Yeah. So just right here. Okay, we're good, we're good. Oh, oh no, here. I'll, I'll get it, I'll get it. Okay, okay. I've never had sunlight come through and start to cure it. You know, I might be able to win with relief cuts. So we've got one little issue spot right here. I don't like relief cuts because they're extra work. Uh huh. In this circumstance, it might be the win. Okay, so that was a uh, user error. It was very interesting. So we're using UV resin, so the sun kicks it, right? And uh, we didn't add any catalyst, but we had the door propped open. Normal eye glass at noon, there's no sunlight coming in, and there's a single sliver of light coming through the door. And so we were going tucking the rails, and this whole area started to gel. So we freaked out, we really quickly closed the door, I couldn't quite get it to perfectly tuck. So I did a ton of relief cuts and I actually held it down with tape. And I think it's gonna be still tight land. So this was a, a crazy tutorial. I've never had this happen to me before. You know, we were really taking our time. I was explaining how to do it. So let's see, I think we're gonna be good. And we took so long uh, getting all set up and choosing colors and stuff <laughs> that we're we were right out of sunlight. So we had both too much sunlight and not enough sunlight all at the same time. I think I think it's gonna be fine. Ooh, boy. We're gonna have some areas to sand out, but it's yeah. I mean, it's it kind it's of just gonna be is what it is. Yeah. If anything, we just cut off the rails when we do that, right? <laughs> I've tried. It's it's a nightmare. Don't do it. <laughs> Restart. Did this rail stick? Does it suck or is it awesome? Did it cure? Tightly adhered or not? I don't know. <laughs> Do we suck? Answer that in the comments down below. <laughs> Don't okay. do that. I'm so, I'm self-conscious. <laughs> oh uh, no! Well, we're gonna cut this out, and then look, look at this super nice lamb, and then look at this. Ah! Oh yeah, that is not on ah, there at all. I don't like it. Okay, so we ended up removing pretty much that whole area that got kicked early and not tightly laminated. The trick here is gonna be color matching. Color. Gosh darn it, amateur hour. Had another bubble. Cut it out. Nice. Evan did a really good job of color matching. Looks pretty good. So we're gonna we're gonna catalyze it pretty hot. I'm gonna give it five to ten. Oh my gosh, a lot of drops, not Smear it, get it all totally wet, especially the intersection areas. Okay, some people wonder how we get our gloves clean. So try to get as much of the resin off with just with paper towel, and then we use acetone and a spray bottle. Yeah. So, so glass shops, they'll actually just have a big tub full of acetone, mm -hmm. but it's really expensive. Like this gallon, I think is like 22 bucks. So if you leave it in a normal spray bottle, it'll pretty much, it'll be gone. It'll evaporate by the time you get, you come back. But that's really expensive. So we just pour a little bit of the spray bottle and try not to waste any. Okay, good to go. 
Sweet. We're gonna let it kick tonight and we'll come back tomorrow. Okay, <laughs> so these are our patches. Uh, we're gonna sand these off and then we're gonna pull the whole top and diamond time. Diamond time. So here's a tip. We waited a couple days because everything went wrong on us to actually cut our lap, but really it's a million times easier if you cut the lap right after the lamination has set up, it's tacky, and it's not super hard. So to make it easier to cut here, I'm just sanding partial thickness. I very lightly sanded along all the edges. I you actually do this when it's all just tacky before it's cured hard. Mm -hmm. It's been a couple days for us, so you know, this is the, the other way around. It's much easier if you do it. Yeah. But making relief cuts and I'm lifting it up. Mm -hmm. And look at that. You're Sometimes you can just bend it and it'll pop off. That is sick. From the other side? Yeah, that's looking pretty clean. Yeah, I am uh, I am pretty stoked. <laughs> yeah, our little patches turned out nice. We, we, you color matched them pretty good. Next tip, take this. So, two things. First, I try to sand this. I've sanded this partial thickness to make it a little bit thinner so that we want the cloth to tightly, perfectly just roll over this edge. And then you actually go around it with you know your thumb or like I like to use a popsicle stick and just sort of push it down very carefully. You depress it, mm -hmm. and then so you're you're pushing it down to the foam. You're actually denting the foam, mm -hmm. so then the cloth just perfectly goes over. Otherwise, you'll pull yeah. resin right on that corner. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> you can feel it afterwards. So go back and feel that are between untouched and a touched area. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so do that around the whole thing. And so I, I try to sand it to partial thickness to make this even less invasive. Where do you want your triangle? Um, I typically put stuff above my feet, so I like it ish in here. But like right there. The question is, because how far up are you going to wax it? Do you want it above the wax or partly in the wax? I think like partially in the wax, so like right, I think yeah. right here. Okay, let's see. Evan, that turned out so sick. Dude, I, uh, I'm i so happy. There's some like little specks, but it kinda, it's kinda cool like that. Oh, that is so cool. Hold it up, Evan. That is gonna be super cool. Dude, It's this is turning out so freaking cool. I what? mean, could you imagine trying to buy something like this, like in a surf shop? This would, probably almost a thousand bucks right there. Evan is gonna be a great dentist. He obsesses over every single small little detail. Here we spent at least an hour just customizing Evan's own personal Rock and Sea logo. If anyone watching us is from Ventura and needs a great dentist, come see this guy. Evan uh, tweaked his own custom Rock and Sea logo. Check this out. Check it out. Yeah, that's gonna be sick. Ooh. That is gonna be so. Cut so it out, cool. cut it out. Okay, we just pulled a second layer of cloth. And, you know, it makes a board a lot heavier. Industry standard is two four ounce layers of cloth on the deck. But I like to do, well, for Evan, it's of course everyone's choice. But for Evan, we put all this time into this board. We really want it to last forever. So we're gonna go a little bit heavier glass job and we're gonna do a deck patch with the second layer and then we're going to do an entire third patch over the entire thing so uh it i've just, broken a few boards in my life we should tell the story about evan breaking all his boards i don't know what he's talking about <laughs> so we spent nine months teaching working as student teachers volunteer teachers for a small little school in micronesia and uh during our time we surfed one of, I think, arguably the best waves out there. It's probably top 50 waves in the world. Palakir Pass on the island of Micronesia, on the island of Panape, the capital of Micronesia. It just throws huge barrels. It's super fast, it's super fun. And anyways, the first big swell that we had, 
there's no surf stores on the island. You, you bring whatever you have. You can't even buy wax on island. So you're, you're totally self-reliant. The very first big swell that we got, Evan broke not one, not two, not three, but four boards <laughs> back to back. This was like literally all within one month. I, and like there was guys that would sell boards uh, on island, you know, other surfers, uh, and they would actually sell them for pretty cheap. But our stipend for the entire month was a hundred bucks. <laughs> so I was blowing my entire stipend on surfboards. I literally had to live off of like fish and rice for like a couple months. <laughs> Oh my god, but it was so worth it. And then I just go out and break it again. <laughs> and so the bad thing was, is that Evan, no one, I mean, we didn't want to be jerks, but no one wanted to lend Evan a board because, <laughs> you know. You know, there's an old saying, if you make it out of a barrel, you are deep enough. You're not deep enough. <laughs> so we're glassing this bad boy extra hard for Evan. And let's just say I, I was definitely deep, deep enough. For sure. <laughs> oh yeah. That was so funny. I think you broke two boards, your last two boards, you broke back to back. You broke one day and you're like, I'm not gonna bring two boards out. I'm gonna only like surf this one until I break it, if I break it. And then he broke and he's like, well, I've only got one left and took it out the next day and broke it. And then like couldn't surf during an insane swell for like two weeks until you glassed that one board back together. Yeah, I glassed it back together. I surfed it. Um, I was real proud of myself. And then I broke it again. <laughs> oh I definitely broke one of those twice. Okay, so we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll this back to pop on the logo. I'm gonna sandwich the logo in between. You can put it right on the foam. Mm -hmm. uh, we're actually, well, in this case, on our fiberglass patch. Because when we're doing multiple layers on the top, an easier way of laminating this is to sandwich it in between layers. So I'm gonna put it in between like the second and third layers. So the thing is, you gotta be really careful, is right now I've trimmed up the edges, it's all perfect, it's laying nice, but it's very easy to distort the weave of the cloth when you do this. So to make sure that, you know, after you've rolled it up, that it rolls back where it should have been, what you can do is you can actually just very carefully distort the weave just a tiny bit, and it, you won't be able to see it in the final, you know, product, but here when I lift it up, I can see where the stringer needs to be. Sweet, so we're gonna put it right here. So we'll, I'll put a little bit of resin, we'll put it down and then we'll roll it and do the whole thing. And then we'll take it outside and kick it because we're using UV cure and the door is closed, mostly. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> okay, after saturating the under layers, we're gonna pop on the logo. Medium pressure, get all the excess out of there. All excess, you want it tight lambed. Yeah, try not to touch it, you just barely push it. So now we want to get it lined up. So see how it is nowhere near where it used to be. See, this line needs to be on the stringer. So very carefully. Got it. Okay, hold the bucket in one hand, go back and catch that before it drips off. Yeah, so just sort of work it back and forth, up and down the middle of the board. So, so there's three layers of cloth back here, so you really have to work it around to get it saturated. So you don't want it to waterfall off the sides. Uh, that's the very last step. We're trying to just completely saturate everything before we go and do that. Okay. Okay, so next tip. So see how these rails, they look glossy, sort of liquidy? So that's excess of resin, that's, that's bubbling or raising to the top. So look at that versus up here where you, you can see the texture. So where it's glossy is excess. So grab your, grab your squeegee two hand is easiest and very carefully, medium pressure, remove all that excess resin. So just, Perfect, so see the difference between excess and just enough. So that is a tight lamination because excess resin doesn't add any strength, it just adds weight. So it's sort of tricky, but it's easy to get bubbles, especially around leash plugs and boxes. So I'll take a razor and sometimes I'll just 
cut a nice little hole. Just give it a quick little zip, stop. Now with your finger, try to massage those air bubbles out. <laughs> go, go, go. Okay. Okay, the board's kicked. It's all nice and hard, it's sandable. So next step, what we're gonna do, Evan, is we're going to sand through this. We're gonna expose the leash plug and then we're going to actually retape it. So here we're just sanding through the fiberglass cloth so we can actually access it. So now we've exposed the leash plug. We're gonna tape over it so the hot coat doesn't go in. So hot coat over it and then once it starts to gel so the hot coat won't move anymore, we pull it up. So there are a couple different ways of laminating your logos. On clear boards, I just laminate the logo right when I do the board. Here, since this is resin tint, I laminate the board and then I come back afterwards before hot coating and pop down the logo. I always put a piece of fiberglass cloth over the top, to protect it when you're sanding, let that cure get nice and hard, and I come back, sand down the edges nice and flush, and I do all this before hot coating. The next tip, pulling out loose bristles. When you're doing your hot coat, it's really common for the bristles to actually pull out and get left behind in the hot coat. To avoid this, just pull any loose bristles out before you get going. And you can keep a razor on hand to pluck any out of the hot coat. So pour a medium sized bead in front. Yeah, yeah, and just medium pressure, less pressure, more, more, uh, more resin, more resin. Yeah. So chase that all the way down to the bottom. Keep going. Okay. All the way, all the way. And before we pour more, come back and distribute that. Yeah. Next is cross strokes to help evenly distribute the resin. And then really light up and down. Really, really, really light. Oh, she's so pretty. Uh... Okay, here the hot coat is kicked. We flip the board and we're sanding down those fin boxes. We're exposing the fin boxes, sanding off that top layer of fiberglass cloth. And it's really important to make sure that you sand it really nice and perfectly flush to the board surface. When hot coating the deck, you could tape off the rails or skip the tape and right when the hot coat is starting to gel, you brush the resin underneath the bottom and it sort of fills in your lap line. So I didn't time this one very well and I had a bunch of drips, but you just sand them flush. Retape your fin boxes and then it's time to tape the rails. So when hot coating the bottom of the board, it's really important that you tape off the rails. The whole point is just to keep resin from running down the sides and onto your perfectly smooth deck. So I tape off at about the midpoint on the rail, and one thing to notice is the tape has a tendency to lay flat against the board. Most times you can just pull the tape away to get that hard edge for the resin to drip off of, but here comes the next tip. For any areas that are just giving you problems, just take some scrap tape, wad it up, and jam it underneath the rail to keep that tape sticking out. This is a pretty critical part of the board build. So you have a nice rounded rail all the way from nose up until right in front of the fin box. So the harder the rail, you know, here you actually start to generate this hard rail that lets the water release. And the question is how far do you extend this up past the fin box? So if you have a hard rail farther up, it sort of locks the board into directionality. If you pull that hard line a little bit closer to the fin box, then you're more running off of like directionality off of the fin itself. So uh, super cool, I bumped into, we're out visiting Hawaii and I bumped into Chris Culpin, the master glasser who glasses all of Paisal's Team Rider boards. And uh, I asked him, like, hey, what do, you, what do you think about this? And you know, the, the answer is, it's di totally different for every surfer, for every wave, every condition. But cool, side note, he says, John, John John uh, only has his hard rail extended a few inches past the front of the leading fin box. 
So he says that John John pretty much surfs off his fins. He's not really relying on this midsection for drive. So I thought that was sort of cool. Very cool. I probably couldn't tell a difference, <laughs> but uh, apparently John John can. When we're taping this resin dam to make that hard rail, I'm gonna give Evan, this is a pretty short board, I'm gonna give Evan about a three fourths of a shaka of hard rail in front of the fin box. It's very scientific here. So when you're doing this, you want to set the tape just above the surface of the board to make that resin dam, but you don't want to make it too high because then you have a, it'll, it will trap a bunch of extra resin that you have to sand off. So trick, go over here and catch it from this angle. So I like, I set my re resin dam just about that high. You see that? You see that, that nice little tab? So that is how you you actually dam up the resin and then sand in a hard releasing edge. Is that is that cool? Yeah. There's so many stupid things you have to learn. It's yeah. just like <laughs> like so many things that like you just don't know. There's like no way you can know unless you like actually do. No, it. yeah. yeah, and it's like there's not except for the people watching on YouTube. You're welcome. <laughs> I know. It's like you pretty much need to be like in the industry or just have like people who are willing to talk to you and I've been pretty lucky I've had a lot of really cool people who are willing to like take the time still industry secrets okay last thing about the resin dam when I'm distributing the resin sometimes you'll get bubbles along the side so from now on what I do is I actually just pour a little bit of resin right off the bat and I brush it into the resin dam making sure that these sides get totally filled up so the back there's never any issues because you're going front to tail but the sides sometimes they won't get filled. So I always intentionally fill them in. So of course, blow off the board, get any dust off. You actually wanna have a super, super clean environment. Any dust in the air that, you know, even after you glass the board will settle down on the board, it makes all these little tiny dimples all over the board. It's really frustrating and it's happened to me. So I try not to disturb any dust during this step. That fall from the wall is looking so good. Okay, we popped it in the sun for five minutes. It's kicking, it's gelled up. I pulled the side tapes. So I like to pull the resin dam when it's just hard enough that it won't distort. And the reason is if you don't do that, the, the resin will actually stay sort of sticky. It'll leave this like sticky residue layer underneath. So I always pull this as soon as I can and then really quickly pull the fin box tapes. It's way easier just to pull it then to have to sand it out and it comes out looking cleaner. Okay, Evan's board is totally hot coated. Ah! And now we're gonna sand it. Let's do it. So it's all rough sanded. We sort of had a hard time. We glassed it and it was pretty cold out. And uh, the top wax layer was sort of sticky. It was sort of a pain sanding through. Normally I start 80 grit or 120 grit uh, but the layer was so sticky, we were gumming up so much sandpaper that we jumped to 45 grit on random orbital mode. And that seemed to do a really good job of ripping off that sticky sort of weird wax layer. If anyone knows about this, why that happens, maybe if it was caused by glassing when it was really cold out, uh, comment below, I'd be really interested. So normally start 120 grit. Today we started at 45 to get that off. Now we're gonna buff it with a uh, 80 grit, 120, 220, 320, and then that'll be it. Okay, the long awaited moment is finally here. Evan just sanded this bad boy. Oh, it's so smooth. Ah, I love it. <laughs> we had to start it. 45 grit, then 80 grit, then 120, and then 220, now 320. We got, we got down there. Yeah, oh yeah. We got there. And so one thing to know is that 45 grit, if I was doing that on a ra on a variable speed standard that just spins in one direction, that would be way too rough. Uh, but random orbitals just, they're not as, since they're randomly oscillating, they just don't cut nearly as aggressively. So essentially that 45 grit on random orbital is probably the equivalent of like 80 or 120 on variable speed, you know, they're just spinning straight. So, FYI. Anyways, okay, Evan, pop on the buffing pad. 
Okay, we got buffing pad on, turn it down to the slowest speed. I really like Meguiar's Marine Wax. Give it a nice little drizzle. Oh my lord, this is so freaking cool. Look at this. Heaven, that is sick. Oh. Wow. This is amazing. I mean, this is just... Dude, isn't that sick? Oh yeah. Show us the back. Not the back, show us the bottom. Dude, look at that. Ooh. I am so stoked. Stoke meter. Wow, look at this freaking thing. He's so clean. Oh, I love it. And the money shot. Look at that. Damn. Now let's go shred. Yeah. Yeah. Voila. She is done. Finishio. <laughs> what does that mean? Let's go surf. Let's go surf. Let's do it. <laughs> Open up one and taste it. Wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the credit scene. No, it isn't. Did you actually lick it? <laughs> yes, it. Oh my god. <laughs> Come <laughs> Ah! Wasn't that bad? <laughs> <laughs> Ignore that. <laughs> <laughs>